championship. He won last year, all safely around Redgate for this first lap, and charging down now through Craner Curves and Hollywood, and it is indeed Dave Potter, number eight, the early leader, but he's being... No, I thought he was going to be pushed on the outside there. They're almost side by side as they go around, and it's uh, Graham Wood again, number 18. The 27-year-old rider from Scunthorpe, who had that tremendous dice yesterday in third place there, is number three. And number three is Randy Mamela, the, uh, from Santa Clara in California, and this has got all the makings of a tremendous race. Potter, Wood, and Mamela. Then we had Chris Guy. The field streaming through. Number seven was Barry Sheen. Ten was Mick Grant. 22 was Dave Dean, but there's the first, second, and third. Tremendous angle already as they go around Coppers Corner onto the fastest part of the circuit, and it's Potter, Wood, and Mamela as close as that with the rest of the field jockeying position. Down now to the chicane. Who's going to be through? Is it Randy Mamela? He's making his move very early, and Randy Mamela goes through. He's on a 500cc machine as opposed to the 750 that's chasing him he was bitterly disappointed when he slid off on the first lap yesterday and he's out to really go so it's Mamela, Potter, Wood then we have Ron House from then number 16 Keith Ewan he's followed by Chris Guy Roger Marshall, John Newbold, Steve Parrish, Dave Dean Graham Crosby in there as well tremendous race and those first three are well even now you can see Randy Mamela quite amazing on a 500cc machine pulling away already Randy Mamela, the really exuberant young Californian, and he is opening up a gap already on this 500cc machine. You see, he clamors all over the machine. He's through Coppicewood now, coming down to McLean's, changing down through the box, sliding to the other side of the machine, and around he goes, really trying all he knows, and he's pulling away from number eight, Dave Potter. Mike, this is absolutely fantastic. Randy Mamela on a 500cc machine and already going like a, a real rocket. Yes, Peter, this is extraordinary because, as you say, he is only on a 500, 250cc smaller than the other the other bikes, and uh, it doesn't seem to be any slower on the straight either. And But, of course, the 500 machine is slightly easier to ride because it doesn't quite have the, uh, the acceleration, so you haven't got that vicious uh, uh, bit that you might start sliding. So, uh, But it's still surprising to see him pulling out such a lead so early on. Indeed, as I said, I think he was bitterly disappointed when he slid off yesterday in the World of Sports Superbike Championship, and he's out to prove today that he is the man to beat around this Donington circuit. Randy Mamola, 15 years old when he started road racing, and the rest of the field chasing now, but they've got to chase on, because this young American, once he gets to the front, he really tries every inch, and you can see the superb style, that knee almost touching the ground, hanging off the machine, and it really is tremendous, using every inch of the circuit but looking completely safe and already he's built up a lead of 2.2 seconds over the second place man randy mamela the second place sorry mike oh, yeah so you can see the front wheel patting as he comes over the bumps that just goes to show how hard he is trying he really does try everything doesn't he i noticed when he was going on there you could see him and you go oh geez, your style was completely different to that wasn't it well, I mean, he does clamber about the bike quite a lot. See uh, McGregor's back wheel sliding there. It's obviously still very, very treacherous. And I think they're being very brave there, the way they're dicing together. But as you mentioned, they have terrific mutual trust in each other. And, uh, it's making very exciting racing. It is indeed. As we come down now, the fastest part of the circuit, and this is where Charlie Williams got through last time. They'll be completing half distance when they cross the line this time. And Charlie Williams having a go on the inside again. Just seems to have perhaps a little bit more power there. He's through safely again. Charlie Williams leads from Graham McGregor. The Yamaha ahead of the cotton. Close flat over that tank. And Steve Cole, number 21 on the cotton, still holding on to that third place. Half distance completed, six laps and just six to go. Charlie Williams and Graham McGregor just had a little nibble on the inside there. Charlie Williams is down. Charlie Williams is down and Charlie will be so disappointed. He's perfectly okay, as you can see, just rubs his knee, but very disappointed. Charlie Williams down there. And let's have a look at that again. Here we go. Charlie Williams just squirting perhaps a little bit too front much. Wheel. Front wheel went. Front wheel skid there. And uh, when you've got one of those, boy, you're in big trouble. You've got no chance of getting it back at all. So around into the old hairpin they go. They're now on lap number 11. 17, Graham McGregor. And number 21, Stephen Cole. The first and second. They're on lap number 11 with just one to go after this. About a lap and a half at the moment. Up to McLean's, changing down through the gearbox, round about 60 miles an hour. And they put just a little twitch there from McGregor as he turned the power on. Up now to Coppice Corner. 
and the angle there, they lean it over there, they feel that corner's all right. It's the red gate corner. I'm sure both of these riders feel is pretty damp, and that's where you can see them really taking it very gingerly. Down the fastest part of the circuit, the Starkey Straight, breaking now for the chicane. This is lap 11 they're on, with just one more circuit to go after this. And uh, tail enders already uh, being gobbled up, but this could cause a problem, but I don't think so. Graham McGregor now, flat on the tank. Stephen Cole also, they're on their final lap, both being given signal boards. Well, of course, Stephen Cole can see how far behind Graham McGregor is, but Graham McGregor may not know. And that was rather surprising there, number 115. Uh, Simon Button last week couldn't have known the leader was with him because he kept the line, but McGregor is through safely there now. And uh, Stephen Cole, I think, is going to play it wise and settle for second place and 12 points, which would hoist them clear in the championship for this year. And this is the third round of the championship. Graham McGregor then on the cotton under Starkey's Bridge for the 12th and the final time in this particular race. Easing it gingerly on this uh, rather damp circuit around the McLean's. Safely round there. Concentration, you can see. Just about to lap number 62, Bob Jackson on the 249, Greg Yamaha. On the inside goes Graham McGregor, number 17. And that was pretty close. I don't think Bob Jackson expected that, but he tucks down behind him. Stephen Cullors ran safely also. And would you believe Bob Jackson's retaken the leader? He says, I'm not going to be lapped. And Bob Jackson has his moment of glory there. But Graham McGregor now on the inside through the chicane. Stephen Cull is closing. But Graham McGregor just a little squirt now to the checkered flag. And Graham McGregor gets 15 points. Stephen Cull finishes in second place. And the third place man should be number 46. And that is Peter Labashan but what a dice there it was for the third place. The winner then, number 17, Graham McGregor on the British Cotton, waving to the crowd and absolutely delighted with that win. Stephen Cole, the second place man, and there's a nice gesture there, a shake hands as they go around. Stephen Cole and Graham McGregor, the crowd waving a British bike, has won the 250 event here at Donington, and we'll be back after the break with the big 500cc race from Donington for the Daily Mirror Trophy. To hold off these guys, because both Dave Potter and Roger Marshall are very old hands at the game and uh, Graham is really showing them away at the moment. They're really battling to try and keep up with him. I don't know how... Yes, they seem to be closing on him a little bit in certain corners, but uh, he's certainly holding his own and doing a very, very good job. And that is the man we're looking at, number 18, Graham Wood, around the red gate into Hollywood. And the second, third, fourth, and fifth place men, and Potter and Marshall and Haslam, believe you me, are doing all they know to catch up with this 27-year-old Scumthorpe rider. <laughs> and they're trying everything, and maybe a little bit more as well. Again, we can't stress too much the trust they have in each other, these riders, with the angles and the speed. And can Dave Potter and Roger Marshall make any impression on Graham Wood? Ron Haslam nibbling now right on the rear wheel. Roger Marshall pops a little bit of a wheelie. Dave Potter still holds on to that third place. Ron Haslam really clamoring all over that machine, virtually hanging on by his toes on the left-hand side before he settles down once again behind the screen, clicks it up into sixth gear maximum revs, and you see the rider sitting up from behind the screen to assist with the braking as they change down through the gearbox. The second, third, and fourth place then. There's Ron Haslam still holding on and trying all he knows. Ron Haslam at the moment, third in the championship. Mamela is well through, and here's the battle now for second, third, and fourth places. And the time now is 6.3 seconds. Randy Mamela leads by 6.3 seconds. Graham Wood, Dave Potter, Roger Marshall, and number two, Ron Haslam, and it's poetry in motion. Not a, an ounce being asked or an ounce given. They're really trying 100%, and in some cases, maybe just about 105%. They're giving their everything for points in this championship. Randy Mammel is way out in front, but they're battling now for points for the overall championship and, of course, the prize money that goes with them. Dave Potter closing a little now on Graham Wood. 
Mike, Dave Potter has Roger Marshall and Haslam in his slipstream. Is this likely to sort of perhaps slow him down a little in his attempts to catch up with Graham? Uh, I don't think so, really, Peter. I think that um, if they start clambering all over each other in the corners, that'll slow them down. But whilst they're strung out like that, there you are. There's uh, Ron Haslam just died underneath Roger Marshall. And if they do that sort of thing, that will slow them down. But whilst they're strung out and stay behind each other, they shouldn't be able to maintain their, maintain their speed. They're dicing for 125 pounds in second place. Mm -hmm. so quite important as well as the It is indeed, and we've completed now nine laps. Half distance has been completed, and the, the lead is being extended for Randy Mamela. That's Graham Wood, Dave Potter, Ron Haslam now up into fourth place with uh, Roger Marshall fifth, but Roger Marshall, even that fifth place, would keep him in charge of the championship, and someone's down there, and that's just at the coming out of the chicane number 67 takes a look across and the rider obviously you can see is okay he's walking about but the marshals in very very quickly with the protection around the machine rider is okay yellow flag being waved you notice each of the riders glances over their shoulder but these boys haven't got time and ron haslam is closing ron haslam now is closing on dave potter it's still graham wood there but watch now for the move for Rocket Ron Haslam. Will he pull out of the slipstream here? Just leave the braking a little bit. He does, and he's through. Ron Haslam now up into third place ahead of Dave Potter and Roger Marshall. Now he's got Graham Wood ahead of him. Two young riders. Graham is 27. Ron Haslam is 24. And they're really dicing now with experienced riders. Up from behind the screens, their heads pop as they break, change down through the gearbox, sweep around Redgate Corner, and the lead now is 6.2 seconds. 6.2 seconds the lead for number three, Randy Mamela. Graham Wood second, Ron Haslam now up into third place, Dave Potter is fourth, and the number 11, Roger Marshall, is fifth. Around the old hairpin, Mike. Yeah, I think we'll see uh, young Ron making a move to get past Graham Wood just now. Probably on the straight bit where he's been passing the other two guys. Uh, he managed to pull up in the slipstream and then do a bit of demon outbreaking going into the uh, chicane. I'll uh, look, look for that right now, I think. A lot of tactics come into it, of course, because I would think that Haslam is just sort of looking and sussing out where he can make his move, isn't he? And once he makes his mind up, he lives up to his nickname of Rocket Ron Haslam. There's no two ways about that. And he's very close indeed now, and we're going to see the move. He's in the slipstream, just as he was behind Potter, but Wood is keeping the power right on. I don't think Haslam's going to get through here, changing down through the gearbox, around it, already catching up with some of the back markers. Ron Haslam now trying everything he knows. They're about to pass. Number 30, I think that was Lingham. And he looks over his shoulder and he's got Potter and Marshall as well there. And as Haslam going through on the inside here, he's made his move. No, they're almost touching there, but Rock and Ron Haslam is through and you can hear the cheers of the crowd because Rock and Ron Haslam is the local hero and he's the boy they like to see doing very well. Well, he is indeed. He's in second place now ahead of Graham Wood. Ron Haslam, Dave Potter and Roger Marshall are still holding on. This is the battle for second, third, fourth and fifth places and points in the championship and Haslam's rear end just stepped out a little there as he squirted the power the tremendous power into the rear end of the 750 Yamaha you see the hand blipping the throttle as he changes down through the gearbox over to that incredible angle knee on the ground almost Graham Wood with the more upright stance up now to Coppers Corner Haslam and Wood very very close indeed and uh, Mel Carter the sponsor of uh, Ron Haslam has certainly got this bike going very, very well indeed, and young Ron is riding it well. But Randy Mammel, in the meantime, is out in front, and this is the battle, remember, for second and third place. Can Graham Wood get back? There's the leader, number three, Randy Mammel, and he has completed now 12 laps. That's two-third distance. And he's about to pass number 49, Rod Sevier again. On the inside he goes, hanging off the machine, and a superb stylist and full of enjoyment. 6.8 seconds now. Number three, that's the man. And he is leading the second place man, Graham Wood, by 6.8 seconds. Number 72, Phil Landeg, is about to feel the power of the Suzuki. And he just squeezes past. And the tremendous power of this 500cc RG Suzuki is just absolutely phenomenal. He's round McLean's, and there's the wheelie starting. 
He said when he gets out in front, he feels a little bit lonely when he's got a lead of five or six seconds, and he likes to pop the odd wheelie or two, and the crowd really love it as well. Down the Starkey straight, a wheelie again. Breaking now severely, changing down through the gearbox. Into right-hander, the left-hander. The flag you may have noticed there was the warning flag that there is a little bit of oil on the circuit from a previous spill. It's a red and yellow striped flag. But Randy Mammel and I completed 13 laps and looking just as comfortable as ever. The battle rages for the other places, but Randy Mammel is not aware of them. He will, of course, from pit signals. He'll be told exactly how many seconds he has in lead, and it's around about seven seconds now. Number three, Randy Mamala, around the old hairpin under Starkey's Bridge. And really, Mike, you've, we've said almost all we can about Randy, haven't we? He's poetry in motion and just absolutely superb. Yes, I saw him racing in New Zealand about four years ago on a 350, and a 250, in fact. Uh, and at that time, even at that tender age, he was showing tremendous talent. And uh, it's all coming to maturity here today. And, it, you know, he makes it look so easy. It's quite extraordinary. And um, he's got a nice cushion there of about six or seven seconds. So I think he can afford to take it easy. But he is the sort of guy that enjoys his racing so much that he will be out there entertaining the crowd and enjoying himself. And he'll be popping those wheels that we saw in the last heat. Uh, he really is a joy to watch and uh, very, very amusing. I mean, he's a man after my own heart. He really is. Certainly, he's the man that people love to come and see. Uh, number three, Randy Mamala, now completes lap number 14. Ahead of Ron Haslam, number two. Number 18 is Graham Wood. Number eight, Potter, and number 11, Marshall. So the order's still the same. But Graham Wood certainly holding on to Rock and Ron Haslam and Potter and Marshall going for points. And Marshall, who finishes in that fifth place, should, in fact, will maintain his overall lead in the championship. But between Potter and Haslam, it's very close indeed. At the moment, Potter has 67, Haslam has 66. And Haslam, at the moment, is in second place. Ron Haslam in second place and Graham Wood in third place. And Graham Wood is closing. Is he going to have a go? Oh, and that was very close. I think that could well have been the knee that almost clipped there because they do have special padding on their knees because they get that close to the ground. In fact, it's touching there. You can virtually see it. And uh, really, it's phenomenal the way they do that. We've told, too, that number six, Steve Parrish, is out of the race. But now they're on this uh, fast part of the circuit. Graham Wood flying, but no, I think one has them just going to hold it there. That certainly is one of the places where overtaking can be done. But Ron Haslam, I don't think, is in any mood to uh, hand over his second place. He worked so hard for. He's got another of the back markers to pass in front of 132, Les Bergen. And the, two, the second and third place men have passed him safely to Ron Haslam on 18, Graham Wood. And they're really trying very hard. Mike, that made you sit up. Yes, uh, look, Graham Wood got an awful big slide on there, and it must have given him quite a fright. Uh, his race isn't finished yet. He's really challenging young Ron. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see if he can just make a dive for that second place because this is very exciting. His bike seems to be a little bit quicker down the straights and uh, if he could just leave his braking a little bit later going into the chicane, I think he might just be able to do Ron. But uh, I don't know, uh, young Ron's a canny lad. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see for the last lap. Fine, well, they're on lap 16 and approaching the end of lap 17. They're at Coppers Corner on lap number 16. Safely negotiates that. And number 18, Graham Wood holding on, but Haslam has really opened the gap there. And can Graham Wood come back at him? He's got to close the gap over the next couple of laps, and it could be his last lap that he might make it. He's closed up there, you see, but not enough, because Haslam is through, and Wood. There's the leader, number three, Randy Mamala the 20-year-old from uh, Santa Clara, California. Superb style around the red gate, using every inch of the road, but knowing exactly what he's doing. Around Hollywood, he clamors to the other side of the machine for trainer curves, and he's going through there at about 130 miles an hour, down to second or third gear for the old hairpin. That's about 85 miles an hour, hanging off the machine, back again under Starkey's Bridge. 
and again through there at around about 120 miles an hour changing down through the box to McLean's corner second gear corner but still about 70 miles an hour now squirts the power on with the wheelies once again up the short straight gets into fifth gear at about 110 before changing down and around Coppers corner and there again he's waving to the crowd as he's cranked over at that incredible angle he's on lap 17 and one left to go after this and there's the wheelie again and that is at 140 miles per hour that is a fact that what randy himself said he clamors over the machine once again and he starts and look at the wheelies he's starting his last lap and he's on one wheel he was doing that in practice the full length of the finishing straight and the crowd here absolutely love him for it tremendous entertainer as well as a very fine rider around redgate he goes through hollywood his 18th and final time Rainer curves changing down the gearbox for the old hairpin and do we see a wheelie here? He straightens it up. No, the other side for Starkey's Bridge. Disappears under Starkey's Bridge. Through Coppicewood to McLean's Corner. 70 miles an hour. Cranked over at that angle. Straightens the machine up. Picks the front wheel up. And there he goes. And he says, how's that for size? Around Coppice for the 18th time. Waving to the crowd as he's over at that angle. And the crowd absolutely loving it. A long way back straight, and we're going to see a wheelie here. I've got an idea we will, yes. A little wheelie wheelie there from Randy Mamela, changing through the box down to first gear. The right-hander at the chicane, the left-hander, and let's see what he does now. Where's that wheel? It's in the air. Randy Mamela, and someone jokingly said he may have Scotch ancestors because he's saving tyres in the front. But what a tremendous ride again. Mike, a quick comment. That's superb. 35 points, and I think almost a lap record. Yeah, absolutely. A, a terrific demonstration of control. Well, here we are now for the Donington Park 500cc race classic for the Daily Mirror Trophy, and what a lineup of talent we have. From America, we've got Randy Mamela. From Down Under, we've got Graham Crosby. We've got Barry Sheen, and we've also got the new NR500 Honda, and that's one of them, that's Ron Haslam, number two, with the new NR500. Pick plant number 10, wheelies away, and in fact, a false start so they have to be back in position. Stan Woods there, you see. That's the new Grand Prix 500cc four-stroke Honda machine. And uh, Mike Halewood with me in the box. Mike, very quickly, how does it feel to see Hondas back with a Grand Prix machine after their retirement? The same as the Randy Mamela is the man who is leading. That's the second place riders to event. Then John Newbold, Steve Parrish, Barry Sheen inside of Stan Woods there, I think. Gate is Dave Potter. Number 40, I think they're two in shot is Dennis Island. And number 18, Graham Wood, unfortunately, is out of the race. Stuart Van, John Newbell, Steve Parrish, Barry Sheen, Stan Woods, Phil Henderson, Graham Crosby, Steve Manship, Dave Potter, and Dennis Island. That is close as that. There's number 10, Mick Grant on the Honda. But that's Barry Sheen now, number seven. And Mike Barry seems to have made a better start in this than he has been doing this season. Yes, Barry isn't reputed uh, for his very rapid starts, but he seems to have made a better one than average this time. And uh, I'm glad to see he's up into a better position because he has been having an awful lot of bad luck. I hope his machine keeps going today because he could do with some kind of good result. Fine, well, that's the leader. And look already, Randy Mamela is half the length of the straight ahead of the second place man who is now John Newbold, number five. John Newbold, there's Sheen ahead now of Parrish. And this is the battle for the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh places. Sweeping through, playing the curves, down to the old hairpin. Around, Barry Sheen in among them there. Number four is Graham Crosby, winner of the Senior TT in the Isle of Man this year. That's the standard of rider he is. A teammate of Randy Mamela on the work Suzuki, and that's Barry Sheen, number seven on the privately ended Yamaha, the uh, Akai sponsorship for him.
but John Newbold is second, Stuart Van der third. Then we have Barry Sheen up in the fourth place, and he's got a sight set on now number 32, Stuart Van. Barry Sheen crouching over that machine, slipstreaming down the fastest part of the circuit. Is he going to pull out and try and get through here? It depends on the braking. He's got the tighter line if he can just make it, but not this time. Stuart Van goes through. Then Barry Sheen, number seven, holding on to the fourth place now. Number five, Newbell, number 32, Avant. Then it's Barry Sheen. Then it's Graham Crosby, number four on the work. Suzuki has moved ahead of number 16, Farish. But Sheen has made his move here. And he is through. Yes, just through on the inside of Stu Avant. And, Mike, that's the form we expect to see from Barry Sheen overtaking like that. Yes, uh, he's really making up for that very mediocre start, and he's uh, pulling back up the field, but he's certainly got his work cut out if he thinks he's going to catch uh, young Randy Mamala. He's, he's already about five seconds behind, so he really has got his work cut out, and uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing if he can pull him in. Fine, and that's uh, number five, John Newbell, the second-place man, and I'm told that Mick Grant on the works NR500 is out of the race. Mick Grant is out, there's Barry Sheen, Avant and Graham Crosby moving up on the other works as rookie. And there is Mick Grant out of the race with the new NR500 Grand Prix Honda. And uh, very sad indeed to see that happening there. And Barry Sheen himself is moving up through the field and moving up comfortably. He was seventh, now he's up to fourth place. And indeed, Graham Crosby now. Graham Crosby with the works Suzuki. 500cc works bike chasing number seven now, Barry Sheen. That's Graham Crosby. Seven is Sheen, four is Crosby, 32 is abandoned, six is Steve Parrish and Graham Crosby putting pressure now on Barry Sheen. Graham Crosby cranking that work Suzuki over and would you believe 11.5 seconds is the lead for Randy Mamala. Well, this is the battle now with the work Suzuki of Graham Crosby putting pressure on Barry Sheen, two of the finest riders today on British circuits, indeed on world circuits, in close company around Donington. Under Starkey's bridge they go. Barry Sheen is number seven, Graham Crosby is number four. In the background, number 32 is Stuart Van, but Crosby now, can he get past Barry Sheen? Just biding his time, trying the inside, and Ron Haslam, I'm told, on the other Honda is now in 12th place. Ron Haslam is up into 12th position. I think we'll see uh, young Graham Crosby making a, a play at Barry Sheen going along the straight here. He's on a work Suzuki against Barry's work, a private Yamaha, and perhaps um, Graham Crosby's bike is a little bit quicker. And I think he goes. is. You're right, Mike, because he's got through. Graham Crosby moves up a place, and Stuart Vant has closed up also. So four, Crosby now in third place. Ahead of Barry Sheen, number seven, 32, Stuart Vant. And Steve Farage holding on. That's the battle for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth places. And Barry Sheen having a go on the inside here, is he? Can he get through? No, Graham Crosby just squirts the power, takes the wider line, but cuts to the apex of the corner and maintains that lead just ahead of number seven, Barry Sheen. And they've completed now five laps, one third distance. They're on lap number six. And Graham Crosby, machine number four, is in second place because number five John Newbold has gone missing so it's uh, Graham Crosby now in second place but 11 seconds down on his teammate Randy Mamala who's riding machine number three that's Graham Crosby another fine rider a young rider an up-and-coming he pops a wheelie there and Barry Sheen and Stuart Van chasing him now with Steve Parrish still holding on second third fourth and fifth place then we're seeing quite a fine performance here from Stuart Vant from New Zealand. He's a very temperamental rider. Some days he's absolutely brilliant, and some days he's not quite so brilliant. Today he's putting on one of his better performances, and uh, hanging on to Barry Sheen is no mean feat. That's true. That's uh, seven and Barry Sheen in third place. Number 32, Stuart Vant, riding the Suzuki also, so... That is the leader, Randy Mamala, number three. Over 11 seconds ahead of the second place man. And the lap record here, I feel absolutely certain, is going to be broken because he can lap at somewhere around about 1 minute 14 and a half seconds when he really tries. And Randy Mamala is trying. The lap record for the 500 class. And there's number eight, Dave Potter. Out of the race, Dave Potter, number eight, with the 500 Mitsui Yamaha around the Redgate corner. 
looks over his left shoulder, nobody near him because he streaks ahead, and we can tell you that number four, Graham Crosby is still in second place, number seven, Barry Sheen is still third, number 32, Evan is fourth, number six, uh, Steve Parrish is in fifth place, and number 33, Phil Henderson is sixth, as Randley pops another one, even on that very short straight before he cranks it over to go under Starkey's Bridge, through Coppicewood, and down to McLean's Corner, changing down through the box, he's on lap number 12, around there safely, lifts the wheel once again, just a little one that time, up, changing down through the gearbox, around there at about 70 to 80 miles an hour, onto the fast part of the circuit, and he says he does this with amusement, he's got quite a long list of hobbies, he does a lot of training also, does Randy Mamela, there he goes again with the wheelies, Randy Mamela, he tells us that he uh, takes his training very, very seriously, and seriously indeed, to keep fit, to put on performances like this, like that, there it is again, right up in the air, half the length of the straight, and there's number four, Graham Crosby closing now, number four, Graham Crosby getting very close to his teammate, Randy Mamela, number three, and number four, Graham Crosby, first and second. Number three, Randy Mamela, number four, Graham Crosby, and they have now completed 12 laps. They're on lap number 13. That's the second place man, number four. Graham Crosby, another of the riders from Down Under who have come to this country and done tremendously well. Under Starkey's bridge he goes, through Coppicewood, up to McLean's corner, changing down through the box. A very determined rider is Graham Crosby. Super Cross he's known at, and a super rider he is. Super Cross, everyone calls him. Into Coppice he goes. He's on lap 13 also. Around Coppice safely. Now down the fast part of the circuit. Really winding on all the power. And there's Barry Sheen. Barry Sheen still holding on to third place, but dropping back now from Graham Crosby. Barry Sheen, though, a third place. And uh, let's keep fingers crossed for Barry that that machine holds out and he does indeed get that third place in this uh, Donington Park 500cc race classic. Changing down through the box, dropping from about 140 miles an hour down to 45 miles an hour through the chicane. Coming in now to complete his 13th lap. Stu Event, number 32, is still fourth. And Steve Parrish, number six, still holding on to fifth place. Their third, fourth, and fifth. Number seven is Barry Sheen, world champion of the 500 class in 1966. Again, in, in 1976, I'm sorry, Barry, not that old, 1976 and 1977. And uh, old 78, I think he was runner-up, and uh, 79, he was third or fourth. So he's always run about in the world championships. And that Yamaha seems to be going pretty well from now. And there's the leader. Number three, Randy Mamela, and I've just been told that Ron Haslam on the other works in our 500 Honda is out of the race also. That's number three, though, the leader, Randy Mamela, popping another wheelie for us. Down to the chicane, he's coming in to complete lap number 14 now and start his last lap. Number three, Randy Mamela. What a tremendous disappointment this must be to Honda uh, after spending something like $5 million on trying to get this new four-stroke racer uh, right. And they can't even finish a, uh, a, an international uh, meeting here at Donington Park. Very disappointing for them. It is indeed. Well, that's uh, Randy Mamela, one man who's not disappointed, that's for sure. He's on his 15th and final circuit, and he's around Hollywood. Now he eases into Craner Curves down through the gearbox for the old hairpin, taken in about third gear at about 85 miles an hour. Straightens the machine up, over to the other side, under Starkey's Bridge for the 15th and final time in this particular race. Down to McLean's, he'll be sweeping round there in second gear at about 70 miles an hour. Up the short straight now, up towards Coppice. No wheelie that time. Changing down into Coppice Corner. Number three, Randy Mamela, the young American who is in superb form this year. And he looks over his shoulder, sees nobody near him, and decides to pop just a little wheelie that time. Changing down through the gearbox. Number three, Randy Mamela through the chicane. The left-hand part, the checkered flag is ready, and he pops the wheelie, just a small one, 
and signals his happiness at winning yet another race. The second place man finished with number four, and that was Graham Crosby. So Randy Mamolo wins. Number four, Graham Crosby, his teammate, finishes in second place. The third place goes to number seven, Barry Sheen. Fourth, number 32, Stu Avant. And fifth place to number six, and that is Steve Parrish. So Randy Mamola, the winner, Graham Crosby second, and Barry Sheen third. Absolute course record. Barry Sheen on a 6.50 Suzuki holds the record at 1 minute 14.7. Well, Randy Mamola did it in 1 minute 14.8 seconds, and that's the speed he was going. But there's the lineup now for the second leg, and another 15 points. They'll have one warm-up left to do. Number 18 there is Graham Wood. Number 8, Dave Potter. Number 11 is Roger Marshall. Number 16 there is Keith Ewan, the uh, British champion of 1979. And the tension mounted here, and with me again, Mike Halewood. Can Mamela do it again? Well, I think probably we'll see a repeat of uh, Mamela's performance in the first heat. And um, it was a truly uh, memorable performance because he was only riding a 500 after all against everybody else's 750s. But uh, we must remember it was a works 500, so that makes a bit of a difference. But I think we will see a very exciting race. Let's hope that Graham Crosby gets a better start this time and manages to uh, keep up with his teammate, Randy Mamola. And local lad, Ron Haslam, uh, I think he will be in there fighting away as it, the way he usually does. But a pretty exciting race in store then. An interesting ride of apps there is number 70. But there's the front row of the grid once again. 15 is Steve Manship from Leicester. Number 67 next to him is Alan Pacey. And that's the front row of the grid waiting now for a warm-up lap. Weather conditions, I can tell you here at the moment, are dry. Just one or two of the back markers just being... Uh, slotted into their position there's the cloud that uh, we were looking at with some trepidation but let's hope it holds off because the riders have chosen to go on slick tires for a dry circuit and uh, let's hope that for the next 18 laps of this particular leg that it does remain dry 15 steve manship there that's the front row of the grid number two rob haslam you could just see in the background there 24 years old today and away they go on their warm-up lap one warm-up lap and uh, along to Redgate Corner. And this is a very, very important corner on the first lap. Mike, the first corner on any circuit with a mass start really is very, very important, isn't it? Yes, the tyres need to be quite warm. I think they have to get up to something like over 100 degrees to be working efficiently. And we saw a very good example yesterday when four or five riders went down in the heat, perhaps because their tyres weren't warm enough. And, uh, you know, it does take a lot to get these tyres up to operating temperatures and of course the brakes have to be hot as well so they'll be riding around the uh, warm-up lap with their brakes partially on warming them up and uh, perhaps reading the bikes from side to side to get the uh, proper running temperatures into the tyres it is vitally important that they are working properly fine that's the uh, opinion the very uh, valued opinion of the 10 times world champion mike halewood who will be discussing this race with me again as we see it progressing. 18 there is Graham Wood. Number 10, Mick Grant. 6 was Steve Parrish. 22 was Dave Dean. 7 there was Barry Sheen. That's number 13, Chris Guy. Still on this warm-up lap. Warming up the tyres and the brakes and the engines down the fastest part of the circuit there. And just through the chicane now. And when they're racing, they're touching 150 miles an hour. And they have to drop to 45 miles an hour. So they lose, have to lose 105 miles an hour in a very tight braking distance. And in the first leg, you remember Randy Mamola doing all those wheelies. Well, he told me uh, that he's doing about 140 miles an hour on the back wheel down there, believe it or not. And that takes some doing indeed. But can he do it again, I wonder? He's got 15 points in the championship. The current position's now after the first leg. Roger Marshall has 80 points. Dave Potter, 67. Ron Haslam, 66. Keith Ewan, 49. And Barry Sheen, 30. They are the points order at the start of this particular leg. Roger Marshall there, the leader of the championship with 80 points and also leading the World of Sports Superbike Challenge this year also. Number 15, Steve Manship there from uh, Leicester, British champion in 1976. He was, but they're all set to go now. The 10-second board is shown, and away they go. 
Wheelies being popped, and it looks like Graham Wood has made a very good start, but so has Keith Ewan. Number 10, Mick Grantwell up there this time, but it's number three, Randy Mamela, not quite taking the lead, it's Graham Wood, and this is Redgate Corner, and they're all safely round this time, and uh, treating it fairly gingerly, but here we go now, through Craner curves they go, and it's Dave Potter, I think they're in second place at the moment, but the leader looks as if it could be Graham Wood, it is indeed Graham Wood, Dave Potter, Randy Mamela, and the field streaming through 15 there, that's Steve Manship, and under starting bridge to go on this first lap, but it's still Graham Wood out in front. Machine repaired from the blowout he had earlier, but there's Randy Mamela stealing his way through again on the inside of Dave Potter. And a wheelie, but just a small one at the moment. Up now to Coppers they come. Graham Wood is leading. Number three, Randy Mamela holds second place. Dave Potter, machine number eight, is in the third place. And down they go along the Starkey Strait reaching something like 150 miles an hour and graham wood is leading at the moment from randy mamela but is this where mamela is making his move on the inside no graham wood holds it through there randy mamela couldn't quite make it but he's now got graham wood in his sights and the rest of the field come through we've got keith ewan and then we've got dave potter and then we've got mick grant they're the first five roger marshall then and ron haslam sixth and seventh position but it's graham wood leading Randy Mamela at the moment and Dave Potter, Keith Ewan and Mick Grant bringing up in the rear through Hollywood they go down to Craner Curves and the Graham Wood, the 27-year-old rider from Scumdub holding off the American challenge at the moment but I wonder for how long Randy Mamela really leaning off that machine and using every inch of the road under Starkey's Bridge through Coppicewood they go up to the McLean's Corner Mamela nibbling away, he's going to have a go on the inside, and he gets through. Randy Mamela, superb overtaking, looks over his left shoulder, pops a wheelie and says, thank you very much, I'm out in front again. Mike, I think you enjoyed that little bit of overtaking there he from really, Mamela. He really is quite extraordinary, this young man. Um, being able to pop wheelies so early in the race, he usually saves them towards the end until he knows he's got a secure position. But to do it so early in the race and make it look so easy, puts the smoke to these guys all on 750s, quite extraordinary, really. And Randy Mamela then in the lead from number 18, Graham Wood. Mamela through the chicane. And Graham Wood knows now he's got a battle on his hand. Mamela looks over his shoulder. It's Randy Mamela, then it's uh, Graham Wood. They're the first and second. Then we have Dave Potter on the inside of Keith Ewan. Then number 11, Roger Marshall. That's Roger Marshall, number 11, and he's closely followed by Ron Haslam. has got ahead of Mick Grant, but Mick Grant goes on the inside of Haslam. And Barry Sheen is in the pits. Barry Sheen, bad luck once again on Barry Sheen. And I wonder if that's suspension trouble once again. But poor Barry Sheen, he just does not seem to have the luck, any sort of luck at all this year. But that's back with the leader coming up now to McLean. It's number three, Randy Mamela. As I said, he started racing when he was 15, road racing, and there's the field pursuing him. That's Mick Grant, number 10, the Yorkshireman from Wakefield. Number 32 is Stuart Vance. Number 6 is Parrish, 13 is Guy. 15 you saw there was Manship. And number 4 was Graham Crosby. That's uh, Randy Mamela's teammate, and there he is, Randy Mamela. His training, he tells me, he works out at the gym two hours a day, four days a week. He runs five miles a day, and he periodically uses a punch bag, and he does all that and still has time to race like this. As Mike said, he's unbelievable, and there he goes with his wheelies, and he's pulling out a lead already over number 18, Graham Wood, a young 27-year-old rider from Scunthorpe, who was third in the British Championship last year. That's Graham Wood, third last year in the British Championship. Hollywood. Randy Mamela increasing his lead yard by yard. A superb style and uh, Mike, the preparation going into this machine must be absolutely first class. Well, Peter, I, uh, I know personally the guys that work on, in, on these machines. Martin Osborne, um, another chap from Australia, Radar, and of course Rex White, the team manager, and they looked after my machines in the Isle of Man last year, and they are absolute perfectionists, and really, uh, you know, damn well, when you get on one of their bikes, you know it's going to be a perfect runner, and uh, you couldn't hope for better than the, the sort of machine that young man has got there today. But of course he has to ride it as well. He does indeed, and I've just been told that uh, Barry Sheen's trouble in this leg was gearbox trouble, so that of course, Barry Sheen out of this race, gearbox trouble, and there he goes again, Randy with his wheelies. And he's coming in now, he'll be completing lap at number four, 
of this 18 lap race through the chicane climbing all over the bike once again knees almost on the ground and thoroughly enjoying himself graham wood doing his best to hold on and there's a fair battle building up now for third fourth fifth and sixth places and it's a three second lead for randy mamela number eight is potter 11 is marshall 16 is Ewan, and number two is ron haslam and they're battling it out for third fourth fifth and sixth places Roger Marshall leading the championship. Dave Potter, the man who won the championship last year and is currently holding on to second place. Dave Potter, the Yorkshireman living in London, number 11. 16 is Keith Ewan and number two is Ron Haslam. Under Starkey's Bridge through Coppice Wood and they're closing a little now. I think these four on uh, Graham Wood and we're going to find five of them all battling out for second to seventh places. Ewan is number 16, number 2 is Haslam, they're jockeying positions now up the straight, 8 is Potter, and they're closing definitely on Graham Wood, Dave Potter really on song, he uh, won the World of Sports Superbike Challenge here yesterday, he did the double at Mallory just a couple of weeks ago, and he really is on song at the moment with the team Mitsui Yamaha. 18, Graham Wood, 8, Dave Potter, 11, Roger Marshall, 2, Randy Mam uh, 2 is Ron Haslam, and number 16, Keith Ewan relegated now. And the lead now, believe it or not, is increased by 4 point, to 4.3 seconds, 1.3 seconds per lap. And I wonder if the all-time lap record here at Donington going to fall to that young American, Randy Mamela. Around Hollywood, Craner Curves, 18, that's the second place man, Graham Wood, 8 is Potter, 11 is Marshall, and they're definitely closing now, the second, third and fourth place men, Dave Potter, really on form, Roger Marshall, number 11, again enjoying it, he was British champion in 1975 and 1977, Roger Marshall, machine number 11, and really enjoying life now, 18 Wood, 8 Potter, 11 Marshall, second, third and fourth, Number two, Ron Haslam trying to get to grips with Roger Marshall. And Randy Mammel, in the meantime, steams on in front. There's Rocket Ron Haslam, 24 today, a 750 Yamaha. They're now on the Starkey Strait, about 150 miles an hour, changing down through the box. Six laps completed now as they cross the line for one third distance. That's Dave Potter there, leading number 11, Roger Marshall. And there's the leader. Number three, Randy Mamela, and look at the distance at one third distance. Six laps have been completed, and he is increasing his lead all the time. He is now five seconds ahead of the second place man. Five seconds ahead, and there you can see he's round Craner Curves before the second place man really completes going round Redgate. And Randy Mamela, what more can you say about him? Among his hobbies, he has antique and vintage autos. He's got a Labrador dog named Rex, and he likes roller skating and, above all, skiing, motorcycles and motorcycling. His cars, he's got a 1934 Ford car, a 1967 Mustang and a 1967 Cougar, and he's got a Suzuki GS1100 for his own personal transport. But that's a 500 work Suzuki he's on at the moment. Randy Mamela, he is just unsung, Mike, isn't he? And look at the wheelies he's popping there. And uh, this is the second group, though. Number 18, Graham Wood, has got a lot of talent behind him, Mike. Well, here we are now for the Donington Park 500cc race classic for the Daily Mirror Trophy. And what a lineup of talent we have. From America, we've got Randy Mamela. From Down Under, we've got Graham Crosby. We've got Barry Sheen. And we've also got the new NR500 Honda. And that's one of them. That's Ron Haslam, number two, with the new NR500. Mick Grant, number 10. Wheelies away. And, in fact, a false start. So they have to be back in position. Stan Woods there, you see. That's the new Grand Prix 500cc four-stroke Honda machine. And uh, Mike Halewood with me in the box. Mike, very quickly, how does it feel to see Hondas back with a Grand Prix machine after their retirement? The St. Reddy's spreading well out under Starkey's Bridge. A down to McLean's, a right-hander taking it round about 70 miles an hour. And it is Randy Mamela as the early leader from Stuart Van, then Steve Parrish. Barry Sheen was number seven. Ten, there is Mick Grant on the Honda. And number 30 was Lingham, but we're now up at Coppers Corner already, and they're on the fastest part of the circuit now. 
and Randy Mamala streaking ahead of number 32, who is Stu Avant, the New Zealand rider. But Randy Mamala from Santa Clara, California, the young 20-year-old star of American racing, leading the Shell Sport 500cc championship this year, well up in the world championship, and wheelies coming already from him. But now the field, number 32, is Stu Avant. The third place man is number five, John Newbold, then Steve Parrish, then number 20 is Stan Woods. Barry Sheen, number seven, on the inside of number 33, Phil Henderson. Barry Sheen this year on private Yamahas, and he's had a pretty good start there, and uh, holding on well, and can Barry Sheen come through and make some impression, because he's going to realize that Randy Mamola is the man who is leading. That's the second place rider, Stu Avant, then John Newbold, Steve Parrish, Barry Sheen inside of Stan Woods there, I think. Game is Dave Potter. Number 40, I think they're two in shovels, Dennis Island. And number 18, Graham Wood, unfortunately, is out of the race. Stu Van, John Newbold, Steve Parrish, Barry Sheen, Stan Woods, Phil Henderson, Graham Crosby, Steve Manship, Dave Potter, and Dennis Island. They're as close as that. There's number 10, Mick Grant on the Honda. But that's Barry Sheen now, number seven. And Mike Barry seems to have made a better start in this than he has been doing this season. Yes, Barry isn't reputed uh, for his very rapid starts, but he seems to have made a better one than average this time. And uh, I'm glad to see he's up into a better position because he has been having an awful lot of bad luck. I hope his machine keeps going today because he could do with some kind of good result. Fine, well, that's the leader. And <laughs> look already, Randy Mamala is half the length of the straight ahead of the second place man who is now John Newbold, number five. John Newbold, there's Sheen ahead now of Parrish. And this is the battle for the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh places. Sweeping through trainer curves down to the old hairpin. Around Barry Sheen in among them there. Number four is Graham Crosby. Winner of the Senior TT in the Isle of Man this year. That's the standard of rider he is. A teammate of Randy Mamela on the work Suzuki. And that's Barry Sheen, number seven, on the privately ended Yamaha, the uh, Akai sponsorship for him. But John Newbold the second, Stu Avant is third. Then we have Barry Sheen up into fourth place. And he's got a sight set on now, number 32, Stu Avant. Barry Sheen crouching over that machine slipstreaming down the fastest part of the circuit. Is he going to pull out and try and get through here? It depends on the braking. He's got the tighter line if he can just make it, but not this time. Stu Avant goes through. Then Barry Sheen, number seven, holding on to the fourth place now. Number five, Newbold. Number 32, Avant. Then it's Barry Sheen. Then it's Graham Crosby, number four, on the work Suzuki. has moved ahead of number 16, Farish. But Sheen has made his move here. And he is through. Yes, just through on the inside of Stu Avant. And, Mike, that's the form we expect to see from Barry Sheen overtaking like that. Yes, uh, he's really making up for that very mediocre start, and he's uh, pulling back up the field, but he's certainly got his work cut out if he thinks he's going to catch uh, young Randy Mamala. He's, he's already about five seconds behind, so he really has got his work cut out, and uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing if he can pull him in. That's fine, and that's uh, number... Five, John Newbold, the second place man, and I'm told that Mick Grant on the works NR500 is out of the race. Mick Grant is out. There's Barry Sheen, Avant and Graham Crosby moving up on the other works Suzuki, and there is Mick Grant out of the race with the new NR500 Grand Prix Honda, and uh, very sad indeed to see that happening there. And Barry Sheen himself is moving up through the field and moving up comfortably. He was seventh, now he's up to fourth place, and indeed. Graham Crosby now. Graham Crosby with the Work Suzuki. 500cc works bike chasing number seven now, Barry Sheen. That's Graham Crosby. Seven is Sheen, four is Crosby, 32 is Abandon, six is Steve Parrish, and Graham Crosby putting pressure now on Barry Sheen. Graham Crosby cranking that Work Suzuki over, and would you believe 11.5 seconds is the lead for Randy Mamala. Well, this is the battle now with the work Suzuki of Graham Crosby putting pressure on Barry Sheen, two of the finest riders today on British circuits, indeed on world circuits, in close company around Donington. Under Starkey's bridge they go. Barry Sheen is number seven, Graham Crosby is number four. In the background, number 32 is Stu Avant, but Crosby now, can he get past Barry Sheen? Just biding his time, trying the inside. 
and Ron Haslam, I'm told, on the other Honda is now in 12th place. Ron Haslam is up into 12th position. I think we'll see uh, young Graham Crosby making a, a play at Barry Sheen going on the straight here. He's on a work Suzuki against Barry's uh, private Yamaha, and perhaps um, Graham Crosby's bike is a little bit quicker. And I think he is, you're right, Mike, because he's got through. And Graham Crosby moves up a place, and Stu Avant has closed up also. So four, Crosby now in third place. Ahead of Barry Sheen, number seven, 32, Stu Avant, and Steve Farage holding on. That's the battle for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth places. And Barry Sheen having a go on the inside here, is he? Can he get through? No, Graham Crosby just squirts the power, takes the wider line, but cuts to the apex of the corner and maintains that lead just ahead of number seven, Barry Sheen. And they've completed now five laps, one third distance, they're on lap number six, and Graham Crosby, machine number four, is in second place, because number five, John Newbold, has gone missing, so it's uh, Graham Crosby now in second place, but 11 seconds down on his teammate, Randy Mamola, who's riding machine number three. That's Graham Crosby. Another fine rider, a young rider, an up-and-coming, he pops a wheelie there. And Barry Sheen and Stu Van chasing him now with Steve Parrish still holding on. Second, third, fourth and fifth place then. We're seeing quite a fine performance here from Stu Van from New Zealand. He's a very temperamental rider. Some days he's absolutely brilliant and some days he's not quite so brilliant. But today he's putting on one of his better performances and uh, hanging on to Barry Sheen is no mean feat. That's true. That's... Uh... Seven and Barry Sheen in third place. Number 32, Stu Avant, riding the Suzuki also, so... That is the leader, Randy Mamola, number three. Over 11 seconds ahead of the second place man. And the lap record here, I feel absolutely certain, is going to be broken. Because he can lap at somewhere around about 1 minute 14 and a half seconds when he really tries. And Randy Mamola is trying. The lap record for the 500 class. And there's number 8, Dave Potter, out of the race. Dave Potter, number 8, with the 500 Mitsui Yamaha. Around the Redgate corner. Looks over his left shoulder. Nobody near him because he streaks ahead. And we can tell you that number 4... Graham Crosby is still in second place. Number seven, Barry Sheen is still third. Number 32, Evan is fourth. Number six, uh, Steve Parrish is in fifth place. And number 33 from Henderson is sixth, as Randy pops another one, even on that very short straight before he cranks it over to go under Starkey's Bridge, through Coppicewood, and down to McLean's Corner. Changing down through the box, he's on lap number 12. Around there safely, lifts the wheel once again. Just a little one that time, up, changing down through the gearbox, around there at about 70 to 80 miles an hour, onto the fast part of the circuit, and he says he does this for amusement. He's got quite a long list of hobbies. He does a lot of training also, does Randy Mamola. There he goes again with the wheelies. Randy Mamola, he tells us that he uh, takes his training very, very seriously indeed, to keep fit, to put on performances like this. Like that, there it is again, right up in the air, half the length of the straight. And there's number four, Graham Crosby closing now. Number four, Graham Crosby getting very close to his teammate. Randy Mamela, number three, and number four, Graham Crosby, first and second. Number three, Randy Mamela, number four, Graham Crosby. And they have now completed 12 laps, they're on lap number 13, that's the second place man, number 4. Graham Crosby, another of the riders from Down Under who have come to this country and done tremendously well. Under Starkey's Bridge he goes, through Coppicewood, up to McLean's Corner, changing down through the box. A very determined rider is Graham Crosby, Super Cross he's known as, and a super rider he is, Super Cross everyone calls him. Into Coppice he goes, he's on lap 13 also, around Coppice safely, now down the fast part of the circuit, really winding on all the power, and there's Barry Sheen, Barry Sheen still holding on to third place, but dropping back now from Graham Crosby, Barry Sheen though a third place, and uh, let's keep fingers crossed for Barry that that machine holds out, and he does indeed get that third place in this uh, Donington Park 500cc race classic. 
changing down through the box, dropping from about 140 miles an hour down to 45 miles an hour through the chicane. Coming in now to complete his 13th lap. Stu Event, number 32, is still fourth. And Steve Parrish, number six, still holding on to fifth place. Their third, fourth, and fifth. Number seven is Barry Sheen, world champion of the 500 class in 1966. Again, in, in 1976, I'm sorry, Barry, not that old, 1976 and 1977. And uh, old 78, I think he was runner-up, and uh, 79, he was third or fourth. So he's always run about in the World Championships. And that Yamaha seems to be going pretty well from now. And there's the leader, number three, Randy Mamala. And I've just been told that Ron Haslam on the other works in our 500 Honda is out of the race also. That's number three, though, the leader, Randy Mamala, popping another wheelie for us. Down to the chicane, he's coming in to complete lap number 14 now and start his last lap. Number three, Randy Mamala. What a tre tremendous disappointment this must be to Honda uh, after spending something like $5 million on trying to get this new four-stroke racer uh, right. And they can't even finish a, uh, a, an international uh, meeting here at Donington Park. Very disappointing for them. It is indeed. Well, that's uh, Randy Mamala, one man who's not disappointed, that's for sure. He's on his 15th and final circuit, and he's around Hollywood. Now he eases into Craner Curves, down through the gearbox for the old hairpin, taken in about third gear at about 85 miles an hour. Straightens the machine up. Over to the other side, under Starkey's Bridge, for the 15th and final time in this particular race. Down to McLean's, he'll be sweeping round there in second gear at about 70 miles an hour. Up the short straight now, up towards Coppers. No wheelie that time. Changing down into Coppers' corner. Number three, Randy Mamala, the young American who is in superb form this year. And he looks over his shoulder, sees nobody near him, and decides to pop just a little wheelie that time. Changing down through the gearbox. Number three, Randy Mamala through the chicane. The left-hand part, the checkered flag is ready, and he pops a really just a small one and signals his happiness at winning yet another race. The second-place man finished with number four, and that was Graham Crosby.